Asia Madani and a very happy Chinese New Year. You're watching News at 10 with me, Zalia Karin Ismail, our top stories for tonight. Chinese New Year hops in with celebrations nationwide. Uphold integrity, reject corruption to realize country's development plan. Malaysia's Chinese community ushered in the Lunar New Year with full of joy and excitement as they celebrated on a big scale across the country. Finally, ending three years of modest festivities in the shadow of the COVID-19 pandemic. The concept of this year's celebration is based on Malaysia Madani, focusing on the elements of unity among the community. Festivals celebrated by a particular race are the best foundation for strengthening unity among the multiracial and religious community in this country. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Fadilah Yusof said racial unity is the basis for creating stability and ensuring the smooth administration of the country. Elaborating further on the matter, Datuk Sri Fadila said when unity becomes a practice at all levels of society, the government can fully focus on planning to develop the country, whether strengthening the economy or focusing on helping the people. Asasnya ialah kita kena bersatu padu. Bila kita bersatu, baru kita akan dapat memfokuskan pada perancangan untuk membangunkan negara sama ada dalam sudut ekonomi, membantu rakyat dan kurangkan berpolitik, lebih kuat bekerja. Less talk, tapi kerja lebih kuat. Speaking at the Sarawak United People's Party Chinese New Year Open House today, he said that when a community is united, the country can achieve excellence and guarantee the prosperity of all its people. For that reason, he hoped that the culture of visiting during a festival continues to be a practice for all Malaysians. The Johor government today announced a contribution of 200,000 ringgit to the Johor Baru Tionghoa Association to organize this year's Chingay Parade. Menteri Besar Dato On Hafiz Ghazi hoped that the event would be organized on a grand scale this year after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Kita bantu tidak mengikut warna kulit. Kita tidak bantu dengan darjat ataupun keturunan. We are colorblind when it comes to the help to helping the people of Johor. 
The Chingay Parade was held last year, but as a closed-door event and held on a small scale, he said when speaking at a Chinese New Year open house hosted by the association at Wisma Tionghua here today. Last year, the Chingay Parade was allowed with strict adherence to physical distancing and wearing of face masks, as well as the involvement of not more than 100 participants. The 7.8-kilometer Chingay Parade is a religious and cultural event of the Chinese community that has been held in Johor Bahru since 1870 and includes a session of beautifully decorated floats. Perjalanan ini memerlukan kekuatan, ketabahan dan keazaman kerana itu adalah kuncinya. Meskipun kebahagiaan dan kegembiraan pernah dikecapi, itu tertinggal untuk sejarah. Ini bukan cerita tentang arnab dan kura-kura. Ini kisah Miki. Miki yang gagah meneruskan perjalanan untuk terus bernafas di kala ini. Lelah, penat, memungkinkan untuk menyerah. Adakah setelah menempuh kepayahan dan kesusahan ini, tewas pengakhirannya? Namun, selagi mana ada harapan, pasti sinar akan hadir. Begitu juga dengan kita yang telah menempuh pelbagai cabaran dan dugaan selama ini. Dalam mencari sinar harapan, jangan pernah mengalah. Ayo kita bangkit. Kita bangkit dengan perpaduan. Sebagai satu negara merdeka dan sudah matang dan dewasa, wajar kita perkasakan semua rakyat, semua kaum di negara Malaysia tercinta. Jadi untuk kesempatan ini, marilah kita sama-sama merayakan Hari Kebesaran Masyarakat Cina, Kongi Pak Choi, Sin Nian Kuai Le, Sin Nian Hao. And still on the local front, the government will always ensure good governance by upholding the principle of integrity, especially rejecting corrupt practices to ensure that the country's development plan can be realised. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim said all parties in the unity government had been given clear instructions on the matter. Kita bagi beberapa peraturan yang jelas. Kalau mau kuat, kalau mau rakyat sokong, Pemimpin-pemimpin mesti tolak rasuah salah guna kuasa. Kalau mau jadi pemimpin, kalau mau kaya, masuk berniaga. Kalau mau kaya, jadi businessman. Tapi kalau mau jadi menteri dan mau juga mau cari wang, mau jadi kaya, dia kena keluar sebagai menteri dan tumpu berniaga. In that regard, the Premier said he introduced the Malaysia Madani as he convinced that Malaysia's great potential can only be optimised if the principle of integrity is upheld and there are no corrupt practices while leaders are not racing to accumulate wealth. Speaking at the Chinese New Year Open House in Kuala Lumpur, Datuk Sri Anwar said he was firm on the matter and thus far all members of the Cabinet understood the direction outlined and implemented good governance consistently. On another note, the Prime Minister said a large part of the Malaysia Agreement 1963, or I mean 63, has been resolved by the unity government. And this includes the annual expenditure distribution and the appointment of Sabah and Sarawak representatives in the Inland Revenue Board. Jadi sekarang ini kita perturunkan pelaksanaan di peringkat negeri, di bawah JKN negeri dengan tentunya syarat pengawasan dan peraturan kewangan yang ketat dan juga dipantau oleh Kementerian Kewangan. Tapi kuasa itu dipulang kepada negeri. Kemudian yang besar-besar seperti umpamanya uh, wakil Sabah dan Sarawak dalam lembaga hasil dalam negeri itu tertangguh lama jadi saya dah luluskan. Kemudian ketiga soal peruntukan adalah perjanjian itu peruntukan setiap tahunan. Selama ini Sarawak dapat 16 juta. 
Jadi bagi dia tak menusabah lah semangat perbelanjaan. Oleh itu kita buat ada beberapa format uh, peraturan yang meningkatkan sekarang kepada 300 juta ringgit uh, setahun. Uh, itu tertakluk kepada beberapa uh, perincian uh, perjanjian. Datuk Sri Anwar said it was important to resolve the matter to prove that the unity government was serious about fulfilling the promises made in MA63. He said the success of resolving most of the main issues was driven by the firmness and sincerity of the leadership of the unity government. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi advised ulama or religious scholars involved in politics not to change religious laws and fatwas according to their whims and fancies. He said the action could cause the public and the Muslim community to disrespect them. Jangan tukar fatwa lah. Akhirnya ulama politik tidak akan dihormati oleh rakyat dan oleh orang Islam. Ya? Ulama kena ada integriti sebagai ulama. Jangan tukar-tukar fatwa, okey? Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid said this when asked to comment on the stance of past President Tan Sri Abdul Hadi Awang, who defended the giving of cash during election campaigns, saying that it was not against election rules as the money was distributed for charity. The statement by Tan Sri Abdul Hadi was in response to the action by Trungganu Amno in filing petitions to contest the 15th general election result for the parliamentary seats of Marang, Kuala Trungganu and Kemaman on the grounds of corruption. MCMC blocks 1.8 billion scam calls from 2017 to 2022. The Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission MCMC blocked 1.8 billion scam calls from 2017 to last year. Communications and Digital Minister Fami Fazil also revealed that since 2018, a total of 300 million scam messages via SMS had been blocked. Fahmi said he was informed about the matter during his meeting with the National Anti-Financial Crime Centre together with MCMC and several other parties. The minister advised all members of the public to be careful during this festive season because there will definitely be those who wish to take advantage of the situation. Sekiranya anda mendapat apa-apa tawaran, sama ada kerja ataupun perkhidmatan, Tolong buat pengesahan ya, sebelum kita uh, terpedaya ya, oleh skamer-skamer ini. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Ya, dan buat laporan polis, call 997 segera supaya kita boleh bantu. He further noted that there are various types of scams at the moment and they are not easy to deal with because when a modus operandi is established, new types of scams will emerge. On scams on Telegram messaging app, Fami said he would try to contact its officials to discuss the prevention measures. The Federation of Malaysian Manufacturers, FMM, has welcomed the government's initiative to introduce the Foreign Worker Recruitment Relaxation Plan and Illegal Immigration Recalibration Plan 2.0 to meet the immediate labour needs of the economic sectors. It said the government, which introduced the window on the easing of the hiring rules until 31st March this year, recognises the urgent labour shortages in the critical sectors or subsectors which have impeded business operations and growth during the period of prolonged uncertainty. The Federation is thankful that the application mechanism for the recruitment has remained the same, where employers will continue to use the foreign worker centralised management system for the end-to-end -end process before the application and issuance of the visa with reference by the Immigration Department. Moving forward, the Federation hoped that there could be a more seamless process from one ministry to the other to enhance the efficiency of the system and reduce the time taken to complete the recruitment process. Its members are encouraged to take the opportunity of the window on the easing of the hiring rules as well as the illegal immigrant recalibration plan 2.0 based on their needs and affordability. Police arrested 78 individuals, including a foreigner nicknamed Doctor, who is believed to be a drug peddler in a special operation at entertainment centres in Batu Pahat and Kluang district early today. 
Johor Police Chief Datuk Kamarul Zaman Mahmud said the doctor was among eight foreign nationals and 70 locals arrested in the operation conducted between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. All of them are aged between 16 and 68. He said there were among 246 individuals who were rounded up in the operation conducted at three entertainment centres in Batu Pahat and Kluang, two of which were found to be operating without a valid licence. 68 of them tested positive for drugs and the police also seized 3.43 kilograms of ecstasy, 417.08 grams of ketamine, 1,368 ecstasy pills and 300 aramin 5 pills estimated to be worth over 261,000 ringgit. Datuk Kamaru Zaman said police also confiscated a car and cash of 31,218 ringgit. All those arrested will be in remand for between one and six days for investigation under sections 39B, 12 subsection 2 and 15 subsection 1 subsection A of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952, section 15 subsection 1 subsection C of the Immigration Act 1959-1963 and sections 6 subsection 2 and 11 subsection 2 of the Johor Entertainment and Places of Entertainment Enactment. In our foreign segment, injured rushed to hospital after mass shooting in Los Angeles area. At least nine killed. Malaysia strongly condemns the provocative action of Rasmus Paludan, leader of Denmark's far-right Stram Kurs, for burning a copy of the Holy Quran in Stockholm, Sweden. Prime Minister Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim said the Islamophobic act of the Swedish-Danish far-right politician was a grave provocation to Muslims all over the world. Dato Sri Anwar urged the Swedish government to take urgent measures against the perpetrators of the act, as well as ensuring drastic steps in the future to address the alarming rise of Islamophobia in Sweden. He said such a blatant defilement of Islam's holy book by the politician constitutes a grave provocation to the sensitivities of not just Turkey, but more than two billion Muslims in the world. He added Malaysia denounces the repeated hate crimes targeting Muslims in the world, as well as all forms of incitement to hate hatred and the fanning of racism in word or deed. The Premier called on the international community to reject race or religious baiting under the guise of freedom of expression and to remain united against all forms of incitement to hate and violence. At least nine people were killed in a mass shooting in the city of Monterey Park, California, late on Saturday, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department said. The department said the suspect was male, but it was not clear if he was still at large. The shooting took place after 10 p.m. around the location of a Chinese Lunar New Year celebration held in Monterey Park, U.S. Footage posted on social media showed injured people on stretchers being taken to ambulances by emergency staff. Around the scene of the shooting, reported to have been at a dance club, police guarded cordon off streets, the video showed. Tens of thousands of people had attended the festival earlier in the day. The Los Angeles Times quoted the owner of a nearby restaurant as saying that people who sought shelter in his property told him there was a man with a machine gun in the area. Sung Won Choi told the newspaper that he believed the shooting took place at a dance club. Monterey Park is a city in Los Angeles County, around 11 kilometers from downtown Los Angeles. China rang in the Lunar New Year today with many residents praying for health after three years of stress and financial hardship under the pandemic. As officials reported, almost 13,000 new deaths caused by the virus between 13 and 19 January. Queues stretched for about one kilometre or a half mile outside the iconic Lama Temple in Beijing, which had been repeatedly shut before COVID-19 restrictions ended in early December, with thousands of people waiting for their turn to pray for their loved ones. <coughs>
The 13,000 deaths in the past week added to the nearly 60,000 in the month or so before that. Chinese health experts said the wave of infections across the country had already peaked. The death toll update from China's Center for Disease Control and Prevention comes amid doubts over Beijing's data transparency and remains extremely low by global standards. The creative team of the 2023 China Media Group CMG Spring Festival Gala has made sincere efforts to present audience with a variety show that highlights not only Chinese aesthetics and technical innovations, but also warmth and Chinese people's feelings about the past year of 2022, said the gala's chief director. The gala opened on the eve of the Chinese Lunar New Year of the Rabbit. Trying to show new era of prosperity, better life in each passing day. The entire show adhered to the general tone of joy, auspiciousness and jubilation, highlighting the theme of happiness and confidence. Yu Lei, chief director of this year's gala, said the team had tried its best in the past few months in preparing for this New Year's Eve dinner for all Chinese people, striving to express the best wishes for the New Year in a vibrant, warm, caring and hopeful atmosphere. For the visual effect and colour tone of this year's gala, Yu said the team consulted experts from the Central Academy of Fine Arts and decided to draw inspirations from traditional Chinese colours. On the stage of this year's Spring Festival Gala, a cultural feast of traditional Chinese arts was presented to audience via a series of performances featuring the Nanyin music, acrobatics, martial arts, still walk and operas. You said the team also wanted to tell the stories of ordinary people in the past year through various theatrical forms, the heartwarming moments and memories shared by all Chinese people. New Zealand's ruling Labour Party today selected Chris Hipkins to replace Jacinda Ardern as its leader and the 41st Prime Minister of the country. Hipkins, 44, was the only nomination for the job and his confirmation in a party meeting on Sunday known as the Labour Caucus was largely a formality. His appointment to the top job followed the surprise resignation on Thursday by Arden, who said she had no more in the tank to lead the country. Hipkins said he would be sworn in as the nation's 41st Prime Minister by the Governor-General on Wednesday after Arden formally steps down. New Zealand and his leadership will switch its focus from COVID-19 to bolstering the economy. The cost of living, rising inflation and workforce shortages have been blamed in part for Labour's decline in the poll since 2020, now surpassed by the centre-right National Party opposition. Hipkins also announced the country will have its first Deputy Prime Minister of Pacific Island descent, Kamel Sepuloni. The 46-year-old Sepuloni entered Parliament in 2008 and has been the Minister for Social Development since 2017. About 8% of New Zealand's 5.1 million population identifies as Pacifica, a New Zealander of Pacific Island descent. Grant Robertson, Deputy Prime Minister under Arden, is expected to remain as Finance Minister. Tongan and New Zealand European and represents... And coming up in sports, India, Aaron Wu Yik fall to China pair in final. Reigning world champions Aaron Chia saw Wu Yi got off to a great start but could not keep up the momentum on route to losing in the men's double finals of the India Open Badminton Championships in New Delhi today. The Malaysians succumbed 21-14, 19-21, 18-21 to China's Liang Wei Kang and Wang Chang in a 63-minute tussle at the KD Jadfad Indoor Hall. While the Malaysians looked strong initially, the China pair played with a better pace to subdue them. Wu Yi admitted that although they gave their best, the China pair had the edge in terms of speed. The Malaysians said they won't let this setback bother them too much as they continue to focus on the events ahead okay. and their preparations <laughs> to qualify for next year's Olympic Games in Paris, France. The heartbreaking defeat also extended the Malaysian world number three pair's winless record against Wei Kang Wei Chang to three matches after they also came out second best in last year's French Open and Indonesian Masters. 
And on to tennis world number one, Iga Sviatek crashed out of the Australian Open with a 6-4, 6-4 defeat by Wimbledon champion Elena Rybakina on Rod Laver Arena. Kazakhstan's Rybakina advanced to the quarterfinals of the season's opening Grand Slam for the first time with an impressive display against the misfiring pole. Sviatek, the reigning French Open and US Open champion, got off to a rough start, surrendering her opening service game after receiving a warning from the chair umpire over the time she took for her pre-match preparations. She fought back to level the scores by the fourth game, but Rybakina would break again, clinically punishing the pole's second serve to take the opening set. Sviatek looked to have recovered after she rattled off three straight games at the start of the second set behind a more aggressive forehand, only for Rybakina to haul herself level with another break of serve. The Russia-born right-hander broke Sviatek again at 4-all in the second set before holding her own serve in convincing fashion to close out the match. Rybakina's win sees her progress to a third Grand Slam quarter-final, having also reached the last eight at the 2021 French Open before winning Wimbledon last year. American Sebastian Corda, meanwhile, reached the quarterfinals of a Grand Slam for the first time after defeating Poland's Hubert Hurkacz 3-6, 6-3, 6-2, 1-6 and 7-6 at the Australian Open. Korda, who dumped 2021 and 2022 runner-up Daniel Medvedev out in the third round, got off to a shaky start on the Rod Laver Arena against 2021 Wimbledon semi-finalist Herkes, but the 29th seed bounced back to take the second and third sets. Herkes, seeded 10th, grabbed the fourth set and earned two break points at 5-all in the fifth, but Korda kept his calm to escape the trouble before they headed into a tiebreaker. Korda raced to a 7-3 lead in the tiebreaker after winning six consecutive points, but Herkes came fighting back to level it at 7-all. Korda did not panic and closed out the victory with a backhand winner after nearly three and a half hours on court. The 22-year-old will face Karen Kachanov in the quarterfinals after the Russian knocked out Japan's Yoshihito Nishioka in straight sets. Korda is just the third American to reach the quarterfinals at the Australian Open since Andy Roddick last accomplished the feat in 2010. Tennis Sengren twice and Francis Tiafo have also reached the last eight since. Francis Sebastian Ogier was heading for a record ninth Monte Carlo rally win after taking a 16-second lead over Toyota teammate Kale Rovanpera into today's final four stages. The eight-time world champion, now competing part-time, played it safe on the tricky mountain roads as reigning champion Rovan Pera closed the gap from an overnight 36 seconds. Finnish driver Rovan Pera piled on the pressure by winning two of the three morning stages, while Belgian Thierry Neuville in third place for Hyundai and 32 seconds off the pace won two in the afternoon before Rovan Pera won again. Elfin Evans made it three Toyota Yaris drivers in the top four. Ogier shares the record of eight wins in Monte Carlo, the traditional season opener in the French Alps, with compatriot and nine times world champion Sebastian Loeb, who is not competing this time. And that wraps up news at 10 in our top story, Chinese New Year hops in with celebrations nationwide. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Happy Chinese New Year and may this year bring prosperity, joy and happiness to all of us. I'm Zalia Kardi-Smile. Stay tuned to Saluran Brita RTM and have a pleasant evening. Good night.